the show. Glad you're watching. Finding the best health care for your kids is so important. Make sure you seek a doctor who will hear you out. Joining us now to talk a breathing condition found in kids is Dr. Katie Russell with U of U Health in this sponsored interview along with a patient, Brock Jones. Thank you both for being here. All right, Dr. Katie, you are a pediatric surgeon at the U. Talk about what kind of care you specialize in and how that led to you meeting Brock. Yeah, thank you for having us. So I do um, surgery for a condition called pectus excavatum. And we run a program at the University of Utah called the Utah Pectus Program. And it helps kids who have dents in their chest, um, which is a really common congenital anomaly that we see. And that's how I met Brock. Oh wait, talk us through this. Pectus excavatum is what it's called. I don't know if I've ever heard this before. And you say a dent in the chest, what's happening? So usually what happens is when kids go through their adolescent growth spurt, their chest will sink in. And we think it's because of an overgrowth of the cartilage that connects your sternum to your ribs. And Brock, what was this like? At what point did you notice that, that this was something that was impacting you? And where did you go from there? Um, well, about my freshman year, I hit my growth spurt. And when summer hit, my friend opened up his pool and I took my shirt off and all my friends were like, what is wrong with your chest? Why is there a dent in your chest? And they were putting their fists in it. And I was like, I never noticed this before. And then uh, it started impacting my breathing. I was a soccer player. So I kind of noticed I was getting winded really easily. And I just like work really hard, much harder than everyone else. Cause I just couldn't breathe properly. Sometimes it's true. It is your friends going, wait, that's different. Hold on. I'm sure they were teasing, <laughs> but they were like, I might need to get this checked. How serious is it? And what does it cause trouble with breathing? Yeah, it can be very serious or it can be mild. There's a range of it. Um, the biggest complaints that I get are pain in the chest, difficulty with breathing, or sometimes there's psychological concerns with it because people are so embarrassed. They won't take their shirt off in public. Other kids can bully them, make fun of them. And we take that really seriously. This is something that a lot of people may not know about and it's impacting more than more people than we think. How common is this condition? Very common. So it happens in about one in every 200 kids. And again, usually you'll notice it around that 10, 11, 12 age range, but occasionally we do see it in younger kids. All right, so Brock, you go in and get it checked. What happened next? Um, I got a surgery called the NUS procedure and they put a bar in, weave it in between your ribs and then they force the sternum up. and. It sounds really bad, but I actually, it was not bad at all. I know you uh, say a bar in your sternum right? and everyone's mouth, <laughs> like jaw, you know, your jaw yeah. dropped. What's it been like for you? What was the process like? Um, it was three months of no contact. So couldn't play sports for three months. And then the first month I was just sleeping and it was, I was having fun. I was just at home for a month. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't mind. I did not mind. Yeah, right. So recovery. And then how long has it taken to kind of feel those benefits of being able to breathe again? It was immediate. Like, once the swelling went down, I could breathe so much better. And when I started running again, I was, it was like I was a marathon runner. I felt so much different. You couldn't and believe it. Couldn't believe it. Doctor, is surgery the only option? There are non-operative uh, management for some of the mild cases. Um, there's something called a vacuum bell, and we also offer that at Primary Children's University of Utah. Will he have to do maintenance? He should life. be good. So we actually, we took Brock's bars out. So the bar goes in and it stays in for about three years and then the chest remodels and then it stays in that position. So his bar is out and he should be totally good. That is good news. Pectus excavatum, you're just educating us on things that maybe we didn't know. Where can viewers go to find out more information and reach out to you at the U? So you can reach out to us anytime uh, at the University of Utah Clinic at Primary Children's Hospital. Our numbers. Uh, there on the screen. You do not need a referral. If you think your kid has this, give us a call and we can help you. 801-662-2950. That is the number. And of course, we'll put it on our website. Uh, what I want to know is how your friends feel now when you take your shirt off. <laughs> um, they are surprised. <laughs> They're actually kind of angry about it. They're, they're like, you could have had so many party tricks. Oh, you kept that's it. true. I thought they'd be impressed. Brock, thank you for being here. Dr. Katie, we appreciate it. And our thanks to University of Utah Health for this sponsored interview. Coming